All right, to start out, what you need is a guide board, if you want to call it that. This board, I cut this board 15 inches wide by 65 inches long. I cut roughly a one inch slot. It isn't that important how wide, but roughly a one inch slot. And then what I did was, on the one edge, I formiced it. Glued a piece of formica down there. Like I said, this is just on the table saw, two cuts, then glued on that piece of formica. This gives me my straight edge and my guide for cutting formica in and other materials. Like I say, I can cut up to a four foot piece in here. And all right, my next step is going to show you I'm going to cut two pieces of uh, formica and make a perfect joint for them. All right, now I got actually I got two scrap pieces of uh, formica, different colors. But what I got, I'll show you what it is. Is here's my my finished edge along this side. I got this piece of formica just hanging over a little sixteenth of an inch or so, all the way along because I want to cut some off of here. And I got a gap in between my, my cutters wide enough. I'm going to be cutting that side too. You want to cut both sides of this at the same time. Now, the direction I want to feed this as I'm doing this, I want to feed it from this side going through. And that way what it is is the cutter cutting will have a tendency to pull, keep the roller against the side. You want to make this in one continual cut through. Other thing I did was, I can hardly see it, I put a pencil line there. So even if they were two different locations, I'll use that pencil line to line it up. All right, like I say, you make sure the formica is nice and there's no smooth on there. I got a little ball bearing cutter. Yeah, I gotta adjust it down a little bit. Now, the idea of this is the straight edge is pretty straight, but no matter how straight it is, even if it has a little curve to it. It doesn't make any difference because I'm going to be cutting the exactly same diameter all the way along, guiding on this face, cutting both pieces. That means when I take it out, even if it, the router jogs over a little bit or there's a little bow or something in it, because that bearing is following the side line, it'll give the same bow to the other side. Now you want to this, theoretically, it, it it'll, should come out perfect, but I mean, that's the idea of cutting both sides of this at the same time with that. All right, let me cut. Let me put this in a holder and let me... It's going to get a little loud. I guess I make sure... Uh, got a little bit of contact cement on the roller. Alright, here it goes. Like I say, you want to keep the router over on this side, make a nice clean continual. <laughs> See how well they line up. That's a perfect joint. Now, what it is, if you were gluing these two pieces together, what you do is you glue one down first. Contact on both sheets, 
on the piece I'm setting it down on. Put this new one down permanently. Then I'd have sticks under this side so this side wouldn't stick as I lay it down. I would lay this down here, match up everything perfectly. Pull out all my sticks and match this down, but leave that one stick there. So then what it is is, once this is down solid, because there's a bow in this, I pull this sheet out, stick out, and then press it down. That little bow, when you do it that way, will give you a force up against that. It'll, this will give a little, but it'll really give you a tight fit. And that'll give you a perfect fit on that. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is how to cut, you can cut plywood with this. Do the same thing with plywood uh, and, and make a joint. Let me show you that and then I'm going to show you another tool for, for when you're going around circles how to do it. So alright, that's that for right now. Hi, what I have here, two pieces of plywood. What it is, I rough cut them already to 45, so they're both at 45s. And say I wanted to splice these two countertops together, you know, for a countertop, or splice them for anything. This is splice. Did the same thing as I did with Formica. Left side's over a little bit. The left side just hanging over the edge a little bit, and the other side is enough that I'll be able to trim that edge. Now, actually, this is just... One eighth plywood I have here. It's all I had really to mess with this. But I mean, you can use quarter inch. You know, you can really use anything. I'd be, but if you're going to go to anything thicker than quarter inch, rather than a little quarter inch shank router bit, I'd get a half inch shank and a bigger router to do it. But let's see. I'll show you how this works out. I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I got a pencil line across so I know where to line it up. I set my router bit a little deeper to make sure I cut through both. Right at this end, I'm going to hold against this side, slide all the way down. Hold against the side that has the Formica strip glued on it. Nice to have a nice sharp bit, sharper the bit, the less you fuzz up on this thing, cutting on the side. There's a little fuzz on, I'm going to turn it off. I'm using is this old and it's worn. I don't know, I don't know if you can tell. And those are glued together tight. That makes a perfect joint. And uh, same you do the same thing for Mike. If you're gluing it down, especially with contact cement, this side you would say glue down first, this side you glue down with that extra little strip underneath there. Put this all down, and then when you push it down, it'll, that extra force will really jam it up against it. But uh, that's how you cut that. All right. Next, I'm going to show you how you join underneath, how you join the countertops. I don't know if anybody's showing that, but let me show you how that works. I have 
had to do was cut out a template, cut this out of half inch plywood. And basically, it's a router template. Because I have to put these in the bottom of the piece that I want to join together. So it is in my router. I got a guide. I buy these guides. It's for a craftsman. And uh, it's just a guide that uh, would guide inside the jig, and then you put your cutter inside. And when you go around with the cutter, you use your guide to cut the slot. That's what that's for. All right. Now, the first thing I did with my board, did it already, but that machine called, called this thing my cookie cutter. And what it does is, there's a cutter that comes out and it cuts an indentation into plywood. And as you come in, boom, and it cuts that cookie in there. Now what you do, You go ahead and you put the cookie in there. What it is, you set a cookie in there and you glue in one side of it for right now, just one side you glue in. Then put the two boards together. Turn them over, take the template, put it on, use a couple of screws, and then I use that router in there to cut out this slot. Did the same thing on that side. Once that's done, all right, as you can see, got the slot routed out. I'm going to take one of these, wrap it in there. I'm going to tighten it up a little bit more. Drop it in there. Pull it my wrench along the side. Tighten it up. Getting through, I, I could have cut a, a smaller slot through this center. in his bolt now is pulling the two pieces together <coughs> real snug all right I put the jig over here I'm gonna route out another one and then I'll show you the finished part together turn it over sand it down smooth put your formica on it do all your formiking Flip it over when you're done with the formica, all the formica. You want to take it apart and take it to the job. Then bolt these. Take your piece apart, take it out of job. Put it back together, put the clamps on underneath. On a 30 inch top or so, I'd put three of these. You could even put four if you want, but at least three of them. And when you put the top on, you can put some glue on there so you'll be permanently gluing it together. But uh, that, that's how you do the splice for uh, putting it together. Now, I use cookies. Like I said, the cookies, there is another system where you take a, a one-eighth, a, a quarter-inch bit that they have that's 
quarter inch thick, has a ball bearing on it that you can ride up against it. And they run a continual quarter inch groove all the way along and put quarter inch plywood in there. But that, that's kind of iffy because the plywood, different thicknesses. Where I work, we had a, a sander. You could put it through and, get, and, and sand it quarter inch down a little bit. But uh, that, that's how you join two pieces. I didn't router, have to router as much as I did out of this thing, but I was in a hurry to make the little jig. So they're important. So all right, that, that's how you glue. That's how you do a top that you got to take apart and put together on a job. I don't know where to get these. I'll let you know on the end of the video if I find a source for them. Um, anything else you should basically have. You know, the router, some Formica, uh, the guides for the bottom of... Uh, all right. Say we want to cover something. A round shape. Well, we can get a rough dimension of how how much we need to go all the way around. But how do you cut it so it matches perfectly? Well, these are just scrap pieces, and this isn't going to go all the way around. But let me show you at least the technique on on how to cut for mica so it matches around a round piece. All right, we're going to start out with our usual. We want the one piece of that that goes around to be straight and nice. So we're going to use my straight edge and we're going to cut one end of the so it has a nice perfect edge. I'm going to mark that edge with an S for straight. It's a nice machined edge. Not clean anything off of it that's on the back side of it. Yeah, that's a perfect straight edge. Now the next thing we're going to have to do, we're going to have to you know, spray contact on here, coat this with contact, coat our cylinder with contact. And then what we're going to do is, now, we're going to cut this piece eh, half inch longer than you measured. You measure around, see how much you need. Cut it a half inch longer. And what it is, you're going to spray around them. You're going to lay this down. Piece down. And you're going to go around with it. You can leave a hair up on the a, on a end of it. Like I say, it, it, I'm, I'm assuming you're doing a fairly large diameter. Rather than this, I don't have anything larger. But let, let's, you know, I mean, say you're doing a two foot diameter. We'll hold a little bit better. You're going to glue it down, go around it, and then after you come around, the other side's going to be a half inch over. And that's going to be stuck down. So you're going to end up with something like that. Now it's going to be a half inch over. Now how do you cut this to match that? Well, there's a special tool. Let me show you what that tool is. This is that tool. Let's see right there. Does it even show it? This tool. Basically, it's a router. I made a new base for it. But it's a piece of aluminum. I thought I made this thing, but I didn't. I'll show you a drawing, the concept of this is. But what it is is, I got a carbide tip in there. And what it is is, a piece of aluminum has a stop here that I can follow along and my other piece will overlap into there. Now what it is is there's adjustments here to adjust this so when this cuts it will cut exactly to it, it'll cut exactly it, it'll follow the straight piece so it'll be a straight nice straight cut but what it'll do is it'll cut that So the, yeah, you can't see it. This cutting edge is lined up with this right here. It'll cut, you can adjust it either way a little bit. But it'll cut, and I'll show you. All I'm going to do is clamp the two boards down and cut with this and then show you how it lines up. All right, you have to imagine this because I don't have anything ground to glue up. But what I, I'm doing it on a straight surface, but the concept would be the same. 
if it was on a round surface. The center would be glued down. This is that last half inch cut over. I take the router, that long router. Take this router. Again, this is the good edge down here. This is what I want to cut. So, I'm going with the router. Make sure that I'm bumped up against a good piece. And turn it on. Now, I actually have it a hair tight. I can look that up, put a little bow on it when I'm gluing it down, because this would still have a little piece in there to hold it up off of it. And then I would bow it down. And what it is is you can adjust it in a cut. This is a little tight right now. But what it does is it gives you the perfect joint and you'll line up. Like I say, this is a little tight. I should adjust it so it trims off a little bit more. But basically, that's how you would what you would use to go around a circle to trim it so it's perfect. Alright, I'll show you a sketch of what that thing looks like and I'll I'll see if you can find if I can find some place that sells these. This was strictly a commercial item. Well, let me see what I could find out there. All right, that's uh, I don't know if you can see my face. That's about it. Like I say, as far as if you make for mica tops, use a high density uh, flake board. Don't use this this coarse flake board that at home did. You got to go a high density, waterproof, because if you use the other and you're getting a little water on it, it'll swell up. The other trick is always with for mica. If you're doing a top, either you have to do either one of two things. Either you put a thin backer. They sell a very thin formica you glue on the back of it to seal the back of it or when you're done with the top paint it with a sealer that way it seals the bottom otherwise a board if you only if you seal the top of this plywood and you do nothing to the bottom of it say you put formica up and do nothing to the bottom of this what will happen is there's nothing here this will dry out the fibers will dry out and in a sense, it'll start to bow a little bit on you. Because this isn't shrinking, this is shrinking. It'll bow. So that's why you want to put a sealer on the bottom, or they sell a flake board, I mean a, a backer sheet to glue on the bottom of that. Other than that, uh, like I said, the only other hint I could give you as far as Formica goes, let's say this is a, your sheet. The order of putting, this is your top you're going to make. The order you would do is, you would glue this piece on first, this piece on first, and then that last. And the reason you do that is, is you put this first, so you try to hide the edge as much as you can. So if you put this one on first and then overlap this, you really won't see the edge there of the thickness of the formica. You still don't see it there, but at least you eliminate one little edge. All right, that's it. I tried finding this jig that uh, I used to trim for going around round shapes, but I couldn't find it. But uh, here's the concept to it. This is a router up on top, got a 1 8 carbon bit in it. Here's the router base, left a couple of screws holding the base on. Uh, the Formica lays on that top surface and 
it bumps up against right here is where the the good finished piece of formica goes and it bumps up against this edge now this this edge here should line up with that edge of the cutter so you can visualize and this is guiding along the shape now now the cutter doesn't go all the way through this it just goes yeah, halfway into it. You don't want it cutting below, otherwise you're going to be cutting into this piece of uh, material down here. So, cutter comes down here and it lines up. you got to adjust it so it lines up. This hole is slotted. So, so this router edge lines up at this edge here. This is where you have your other piece a formica that extends half inch over whatever over into it. So like I say, if you can visualize this, while you're guiding along with this edge, this formica is cutting out this piece of, of formica here, exactly here. And that's how you adjust it. You move it in or out so that the two pieces, when they're cut, fit exactly together on it. Uh, all right, this is the best I do. I tried finding where it was at on it. I found the little clamps and I'll post that where you get those little uh, clamping parts. But you're going to have to make this. Like I say, this dimension in here was a uh, sixteenth of an inch. So overall, this is maybe uh, an eighth of an inch plywood. I mean, what am I talking about? You probably have to go around three sixteenths here. So you end up with a sixteenth in here, sixteenth here, and just a sixteenth of an inch here to catch that sheaf of formica. So you need a sixty, and I mean, this could even be thicker here. It could just, I wouldn't go more than a sixteenth here. This could be an eighth. That could be an eighth in there. If you're a little creative with the table saw, cutting aluminum on it, you know, piece of aluminum, saw cut here, saw cut here. Just round it off on the sander a little bit. Drill. You could actually, you could make one of these things. All right, like I say, I'll, I'll, I'll post where you get the clamp. And that's, that's the best I can do for you.